Okay, so I have a Janome MC4900 and it has a lot of stitches and um, a lot of ways to program things and so on. Now the blanket stitch that we want to do is in the wrong direction. So here it is here. It's number 70 right there. But we want the straight line to be on the left side and the jump over to be going to the right. So we have to mirror image this stitch. And it's not user friendly on these Janomis. So the way you do it, if anybody has one, I'll just go through it real quick. Um, I don't know if the new ones are more user friendly. This machine's about 10 years old. So, um, anyways, so it's in mode 2. You can see up there that that stitch is in mode 2. So you go over here. It's in mode 1 now. You go to mode 2 and you choose, it was stitch 70. So you go down here, 7, 0, oh, and you can see the stitch that's showing is going in the wrong direction because we want our stitches, we want our straight line to be on the left and the jump to be on the right. We want it to jump onto this. So what you do, the first thing you do, and believe me, this it took me forever to figure this out. I had to write it down and I still have to look at it. Um, so what you do the first time you want to bring it up, see I already have it saved, So, but the first time you want to bring it up, you press your 70 and then you press this TOM, turn over memory key. So you press that and then you'll see on the screen it's showing it, it doesn't even show it in a vertical position anymore I mean they really make it hard for you but this position is the mirror image of the original when it's facing up like that it's the mirror and you can see this is blinking because it thinks that I want to add other designs and so on because you know you can make a pattern if you want. Well I don't want to do that I just want this stitch the whole way through so I want this blinking light to go underneath here so I come over here the backspace button, the edit button, let me zoom out we'll take this cursor back okay so now it's under there so, but now I want to make sure because I already played with this stitch and I know how I want the stitch length and I know how much I want it to jump over. Right now, if I hit the stitch width is how far, how long the stitch is when it jumps over. That's your stitch width. If the default is 2.0, that's too small. So you can take, and it goes off the screen real quick, but you can hit stitch width and you can take it all the way up to as big as the swing is on your machine, you know, the width of your presser foot. 7.0 is too big. So I played with it, you know, a while ago, and I like 3.0 for it to swing over. Now the stitch length, the default is 1.5. That's way too small. So, but here's the thing. If I try to make it bigger, like 3.0, like how we like our top stitching to be longer, you can't. On my machine, the highest I can go is 2.5, which is fine. It looks really good. So, those are my settings. And so at this point, I can just start stitching and it'll work just fine. But if you wanted to save this so that you don't have to do it again, um, this is how you save it on my machine. Okay. You. Okay. So to save this setting, I press the stock call key. Now, 
this M back and forth, they call it the stop call key. I guess because it's you can call it or you can um, save it that way. So there's five uh, slots that I can save five different patterns in mode two. So you press this to save it and it takes me to this stock call area. So at this point it's showing me I have M1. I already have something saved in M1 which is actually this design. Um, I already have something saved in there. If I want to go to M2, now this M has nothing to do with modes up here, those M's, mode 1, M1. No, it's a completely different M. It's like your memory, okay? They could have used a different letter, but they didn't. So um, there's stock call key. If you hit that button again, it'll take you to the second memory slot, M2. Well, M2, I also have this design saved, or this stitch pattern saved, but my stitch length is a little bit longer. And um, it's at like 3 point, not my stitch length, my swing over is 3.5. So if I hit stock call again, you'll see the third slot. Well, this is a completely different stitch. It's stitch number 71 that I had programmed in there. So um, if I wanted to see that stitch now, if I wanted to see this stitch that I had saved, I have to hit TOM button. And they show you here. That means you're getting it out of the file. That's what this arrow means. So you hit the TOM button and it takes me to that stitch 71. This isn't the one we want, but this is just one of the stitches that I programmed. It's a heavier blanket stitch. It's going in the direction I like. You know, it's got the parameters I like, but it's double stitches everything. And I don't want that for this project. So now to get out of this, you just come down here and hit the clear button. It doesn't clear that design. It just takes you back to mode two, the first stitch in mode 2. So we got to go back to um, stock, stock call key. Um, oh wait, wasn't I, wasn't I saving that for you? Yeah I was. I was saving it for you. So let's go back and save it. So we're in mode 2. We're going to call up 70. Sorry. Okay, so we're in 70 but we're in the wrong one and we want to program that so we're going to go TOM, turn over memory and it turned it over but the 2 is blinking here we want to edit to get that so now it's the 1 so we have one stitch here blinking we want to change our stitch uh, width whoops, to 3.0 we want to change our stitch length to 2.5 and now we want to save that so we have to save it in this stock area so we have to hit stock call key M1 is taken already you can see it has something in it M2 is taken M3 is taken like I showed you before all those three were taken M4 is empty so if I want to save it in M4, see how this button says, has an arrow saying I want to save it in this slot. The arrow is going in. We hit the M button down here. And so it saved it. I did it kind of fast, but the hourglass went and it saved that now. So now if I want to call that pattern that we just saved, um, say I'm out of mode 2, say I clear out and I'm just, you know, go to mode 1, mode 3, mode 1. If I want to call that pattern back, I have to actually go into mode 2. Then I go to stock call because remember you can either call them or save them. 
and I press that button. Now I saved it in M4 so you have to keep hitting the stop call button to get to M4, M2, M3, M4. So there's the one that we just saved and when we want to call it, when we want to bring it out, we hit the TOM button. And there it is. It was 3.0 on the stitch width, 2.5 on the stitch length, and so we can just start stitching. Now, <laughs> I have this design saved twice now in here, but that's okay. I mean, I'll just keep going with the video here, but so that's how you do it. It's, believe me, it's not user friendly at all. Okay, so let's get to stitching this design. See, there's no um, pressure on the batting. And my fingers, as they're sliding, they're not hitting the needles. This is a much better system. And I'm matching the thread with the um, with the fabric. So I'm just using off-white thread. I just think it looks better. So here just to get a good look at the blanket stitch up close on the front side. It's really cute. So it just looks really cute. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I actually have some markers now that are fabric markers that we used for her shower. Mm. So maybe she could use them if she wants. <laughs> 